warning, we're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Here we go. Another damn 12 hour shift at the old factory. At least we get to walk and see the best looking damn thing in the parking lot. We are gonna go hook onto the trailer and snatch one up tonight. See if we can't turn this 12 hour day into a damn 18 hour day. I'm just playing, we ain't going that damn far. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop. Where is this baby at? It'll be right up here somewhere. She's on. She's heavy. She might be a little hefty. We ain't going far. We ain't going far at all. I'm gonna do a lot of town picking. We are happy we did not go far with that thing because it is all there. The travel all felt every bit of that. Randy's trailer ain't the lightest either, but yeah, travel all. She may need a little bit more air in them helper bags for for this old load here. Man, Uncle Rick's been doing this for years. So we knew that one, it was gonna go over. That was really our safety block. And then that's the chalk to keep her from going forward. Again, cause we've been doing this for years. And Uncle Rick's like a bandit. He's ready to get the hell out of here. <laughs> what do you think Uncle Rick? She gonna be a good one? Maybe. That's it for tonight. We're gonna get on it in the morning. Well, top of the morning to yous. Uh, hey, let's check this thing out real quick before we get her pushed in the shop. Maybe we can see her a little better out here. Uh, 72, maybe? Uh, Ford? This baby's got all the options. Got our old bumper guard. Ooh, safe guard right there. Check her out. Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, this yellow color with the copper top with that cane factory uh if someone did repaint this thing yellow they went all out because it's underneath the rubber uh full interior full door jams uh maybe you can see anywhere some of this paint's falling off i'm not really seeing another color so who knows you know i don't that's what i'm asking you uh camper special like the big old mirrors on her uh she's got some 16 and a half with what some damn 10 plies or something yeah, look at those babies. They're actually still in decent shape. Ranger XLT. She is a pretty solid truck. We got some dual gas tanks going on. Of course, on a camper special, you gotta have your damn boards to step up in your old camping rig. Someone gave her one little side swipe at some point, but really not too bad. Has all of her caps on her. Look at this toolbox, guys. Not rusted out. Good toolbox in this baby, even. I like it. Told Uncle Rick cleaning out the bed is extra. He said, good, leave it in there. <laughs> Why do we have this mirror down? That's a window dummy. So, this is a window. It's not a mirror. Even just a few cracks in the dash. I mean, this thing is good. Uncle Rick found him a good one right here, didn't he? Look at that fancy seat, you know. Yellow vinyl. You want your black cloth inserts. Yeah. You know, she's pretty good quali driver quality interior. Definitely going to be able to just clean this up in here and be fairly happy with it to drive. Uh, we did notice we cannot get this shifter to go back up into park, so that's an issue. Rick did not buy any of this stuff. Looks like it comes with some goodies. Uh, don't know that they're all necessarily for this truck since there is a couple town cars and 
other stuff sitting there. Looks like we got a solenoid. We'll go through all that stuff. She ain't got a bad booty on her. Uh, black tagged in 2012. So here in Oklahoma, if you don't want to pay the fees to update your tag for driving and you don't want the fees to stack up against you for your tag expiring, you can put what's called a black tag on there. And I don't think, no, you can't drive with a black tag. So uh, this thing, maybe they're keeping it as a backup vehicle, you know, keep her black tagged. Maybe we'll need it one day. I don't know. We ain't going to pick up the AM FM stations. This thing would clean up good. Might have to hit a pressure wash video just for Mortsky because he can't get enough of them. So y'all seen the wheel it run with my grandpa's old Ford. Every time we went everywhere doing our tractor stuff, these are the exact style of gloves he always had. Uh, yeah, that brings back some memories right there. We got parts everywhere. Every style of fuel filter you could think of right there. The most petite and cutest little broom I ever have seen in my life. Let me sweep that uh, little running board for you before you get in your old camping rig. Never seen a broom that small. Boop. Yeah, we got quite a bit of parts. I think we'll just take all the parts and go through it on the table. Nothing. What is not a damn thing. Tells you how to jack your truck right there in case you don't know how to jack a Ford. Oh, hidden compartment on the air conditioning. Close enough. Just because I don't want to show this guy's information. Uh, 72 model, last insured. The insurance was last effective in 2007. The holder has held up quite well. That's some good quality insurance paper holder there, uh, State Farm. Every Oklahoman's gonna keep bungee cords, all right? That's just, that's a fact. Okay, so we got our bungee cords, and then every Ford F-250 should have a cheater pipe. That way, when you gotta set your boomers on your chains, uh, you can, you know, smoke those things to Alabama with all the power. Them wasps don't want none. Got some hornets, though. Knock if you buck, boys. Yeah. Get a little arm workout this morning. Well, she ain't got no flex hoses, so Mortsky's gonna be disappointed. Uh, hood ain't too rusted out or nothing. Firewall. I just knocked some dirt daubers down somewhere. I heard them fall right in there behind the fan. Uh, hey, she looks pretty good underneath here, really. She's dirty, but we're gonna clean it before we uh, send her in the old shop. Hands down, most dirt daubers I've got off just the engine uh, so far. Uh, quite a few comments after doing the Chevy Love video, the 64 Impala, because they had so much rat's nest to get a leaf blower. Now everyone said battery powered, but I like gas powered, damn it. So I listen, that's a good idea. Uh, pretty simple idea, I should have thought of it myself, but that's okay, that's why I got you guys helping me along the way. Now we ain't got to deal with all that crap that was on there. I go through this crap like crazy because I'm I'm very generous with my helpings. All this carburetor can have a little extra too, so all that stuff can start soaking. There you go, baby. Anything else want to soak in, huh? Let's get this thing pushed in. The front tire is low on the passenger side. I'm gonna shoot some air into it, and then I like working in my shop with it empty. So we're gonna get Aunt Dorothy out of here. Everyone thinks I'm full of crap and can't get it to spin the tires or I wasn't trying. Y'all want me to hit it with some PB Blast? Well, bless my lucky stars if I didn't just find the cutest little broom a minute ago to clean this mess with. 
let's get some air in our tires pushing cars is the Torola's desire singing album coming soon y'all can get it on the iTunes I cannot think of a better time to try out the old Torola's push tire quick attachment accessory than on this truck with a perfect bumper and a perfect bumper guard let's quick attach bam air conditioning's colder than a penguin's little push pop in here look at that just beautiful I'll build you one of these. They're like 5,763 bucks. That's startup on sale price. Wait till they go up. I go to work for two days. They called in their air force. They bombed me, clearly, all right? And then y'all wanna know why I got problems with them? They're always starting shit. <laughs> uh, let's pull spark plugs and just go ahead and hit some lube down the cylinders. And then we'll throw a battery in it and go from there. Ooh, crunchy. Do a little body work on this ground here. There we go. Yo stubborn. <laughs> Can I show y'all guys why I have trust issues? So I went to start pulling these. I was gonna hit her with the looby dooby, and I thought surely they got them in order. And then look, that one and that one crossed right there. I don't even know the firing order of a 390. So, I want to do a quick little research. Here we go, Ford 390. Everybody knows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Firing order one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Uh, distributor goes clockwise. Just playing. That's just to piss off you, Ford guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. Counterclockwise. Come on guys, everybody knows that's the firing order for the uh, Ford 352, 360, 390, 406, 427, and 428. That's common knowledge, all right? Everybody knows that. So that has us right here is number one. I'm just gonna mark that. Instead of worrying about keeping all this stuff in order, uh, I like to always verify the timing order of stuff myself. So I usually just pull this stuff off and then we'll put it back on and we just lost a plug wire. That's good. Maybe I should pay attention and quit talking. Ooh, that one had all of it. I pulled the other side already and they were all just barely snug, honestly. Spark plugs are not looking bad at all. Uh, I did notice one's kind of smashed over there. It, so we'll check the gap on these. Here we go, sharpshooter ace. Come on. No. I wasted it all doing a damn burnout. Idiot. Just playing. I don't get mad like that. Uh, guys, I think we're out of spray lubricant. That don't mean we can't whip something up real quick. Maybe we'll cut her with a little dash of lacquer thinner. Super clean more like super kill and as you can see we mix this baby to the whoop ass mode ratio so it's gonna get some kind of lubricant in her one way or another that was a pain next time i'll probably drive the less than a mile away to the hardware store and buy some but maybe not coming in hot Everyone knows a clean connection is a happy connection. I used to have to do the Pock County scrape with my pocket knife, but then Gabe sent me this. Now I'm just a little more high class, a little fancier than I used to be. No big deal. Positives live. I don't see no smoke. Speaking of you guys sending me stuff besides this one, like I said, We've got three other models in stock. Well, you wanna see if she cranks? 
I mean, I cannot figure out why this thing may not be getting enough power for it to crank. Can someone come help me? We're not getting a damn thing through the solenoid. Holy hell, guys. I just tried to pick that up off that tripod. This thing's got a built-in pimp cane, and I didn't even know it. Right there, collapsible pimp cane. That's good considering we're dealing with the pimp here. I guess let's pull this solenoid off. So pimp daddy pudding. That's my name, don't wear it out, baby. They only had about a thousand accessories off this positive side. Brown wires, the ignition, red wires, the starter solenoid. Well, I hope you're enjoying the program thus far. Uh, since we ran into our first hurdle, it may be a good time to see what kind of extra parts and components we have inside of our truck. AKA, let's see what the hell we got. Motorcraft, good part. Got us a relay, so maybe we can rig that one up there. Should have been a cowboy. They must have been burning through relays. Oh yeah. Nothing? She gonna be stubborn already, ain't she? What if we just arc this baby across? Oh, she'll crank. So, we may have 17,000 uh, starter solenoids in there, but ain't one of them gonna work. So I'm gonna have to run over to the O'Reilly's. We are gonna go ahead and get a cable to replace this. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty obvious, you know, it could use a new one. And I think I'll probably get, you know, a set of points and basic stuff we may need, but we're still gonna try to get her running off the old stuff. I'll be back. Boy, I don't know if I can find another slow driver in this county to get in front of me. Uh, got back, all right, got our new solenoid threw it on i did get a cable but just to test it we're gonna hook up the old one real quick uh i probably should check the oil i did bump it over once but i did not check the oil on this thing so we might want to take a gander at that oh she black don't smell bad smells good it is dark but this is uncle rick's truck and Uncle Rick said, let's get it running before we go crazy on it. So he ain't worried about the oil. Uh, I know a lot of you guys hate that, but I'm not too worried about starting stuff on old oil either. So that's just me. Uh, disconnect our fuel pickup. That way we don't pick up any old fuel just in case before we start cranking on it. And by disconnect, I mean I barely pulled on it and it snapped. Let's see if this baby wants to crank. You damn right she wants to crank. Let's crank it. Get number one at top dead center on compression stroke. Uh, then we'll put our clean our plugs up and go from there. Compression stroke right there. Damn, I can't get these clips off. Those babies are solid. Come on. Holy. I'm about to lose it. There we go. Damn. Looks like we're pointing where we need to be. Uh, what do we want to do now? Clean our plugs up? I'm gonna clean these plugs up just with some brake clean and air, or use the air, clean them up. I'm gonna check the gap on them. Yeah. Where are these things supposed to be gapped at? I'm gonna have to look it up. We may find her on the valve cover, but let me get these babies clean. Most of these were gapped to about 30 thousandths. I'm opening them up to about 35. Uh, and then there's this one that's just completely humdingered, damn near closed. Uh, so we're going to go 35. That's what I read on the old intro net just a minute ago. I just looked all over the valve covers uh, for information and I didn't see anything. So we're going with 35. Yeah. Get them snug. Took me longer to get that back one started than this one with that AC bracket right in the way. 
you want your plug to quit slipping around, you can put a piece of masking tape over that and pop her down in there. Then if you're you know wiggler 750 model it's a little too floppy you can mask and tape it too to kind of stiffen her up a bit that worked good now i've got to go get ella ray from school and my hands are plumb filthy so what a great opportunity to use these tko hand cleaning wipes by sweet patina his hand cleaning wipes knock out the rest you can get yours at sweetpatina.com be sure to use that promo code on screen they got about every cleaning product you could think of. Half a day gone like that. Have some lunch. If you don't like tomatoes, you can click unsubscribe. Now you can click resubscribe. I'm just playing. Don't, don't click it. I'm just joking. After I finish these tomatoes, we will catch up on our work. There's a dad joke for you. Boy, it's a tight fit, but I could squeeze underneath it. That may be the worst one I've ever seen. That is pretty bad. Let me do the grease lightning slide underneath there again and get this on the bottom side. All right, we gotta repair some plug wires and these, they're, they're on there pretty good. So we're gonna have to work some looby dooby down in them. There we go. Come on. <laughs> Apparently I pulled off the wrong plug wire because here's the end and well, we got to end right there. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Let's try this again. Maybe this time we'll use the right plug wire. I ain't got no cramping tool for this, but I got a, you know, a pair of dikes here and we're just going to kind of separate this and shove this back in here and kind of squeeze it back down and that'll be good enough to run. She's cherry. Where'd I put that boot, Bill? It was right there. I know, but are you bootleg Bill? Just take my damn boot. I got it. I'm wearing it. I just had the damn thing. Is this still wrapped up in? No. Nope. The boot fairy took it. We are good to put some plug wires on, finally. I reckon I'm getting ahead of myself here because we worry about before we worry about plug wires, I guess we can uh, see if we can get some spark out of our coil first since we're in here with the points. So we need to make our coil hot. I need to get me a jumper wire real quick. You can see the ground wire for our coil going right there to the distributor. So we need to get us a 12 volt hot to this side. I feel fancy. Thanks to someone sending me out this alligator clip. We've got like an actual jumper wire. I'm not twisting wires here. What the hell? Throw this on the hot side of our coil. Bill's here, so I got a cameraman. Haven't even touched the points or anything. Uh, we're going to make our coil hot right there. And we're going to see what the chances are we have spark without doing a damn thing. No spark. The points are opening, you can see, maybe. Try the old Mortsky flick trick. We got spark across there, so that's good. Coil's gonna work. Uh, Mortsky flick. If y'all haven't watched Mortsky repair, check him out. Uh, he does a very good job of just flicking points like that and gets them to work. And I've done it before where I've cleaned on them with emery cloth and they don't work. And then you do the Mortsky flick and the damn things start working, believe it or not. And then me, myself, I like using the Craftsman file. And my Craftsman's here got that little serrated, little lines, whatever. And in the field, uh, it's a file for something like this. So maybe between the Mortsky flick and the old pudding Craftsman file, We'll get a sparky spark. We ain't getting no sparky spark. You can see we have continuity, but if I jump across to the other side, we ain't got deadly. Well, I just touched the other side, but touch it there. Yeah, we ain't got nothing. So we're still not getting uh, ground through our points. Cool. 
still some now. So I cleaned on these things a few more times and we're not getting no spark. Uh, I know we're losing continuity right there at the points. These things are like $8, everyone. So instead of fighting these things, I grabbed them earlier. Let's just throw a new set of points in it. If you're gonna do this and use a jumper wire for your coil, when you're actually wrenching, make sure to keep disconnecting your coil where you don't just set that, uh, keep that thing sitting there getting hot. So here's our new points and condenser. Got the old O'Reilly's Blue Streak Specials. So if you're like me and you don't have filler gauges but you got some masking tape and a set of calipers you can fold tape and check it with your calipers until you get whatever thickness you need this thing's pretty close to 20 thou which i know ain't 17 but it ought to get a spark damn it so you can see i got her bumped over to have this open and i'm just gonna put that down in there and try right there looks about right got bill's extra hand helping me you see he's there now so if i go to the base of the distributor oh look we got continuity so that's how you know that's where our problem was and where we were losing continuity these old points are not worn terribly bad but they are super corroded now that i have them out and can look at them all right coils hot let's see if we got spark Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that scare you, Bill? <laughs> you don't want to hold that? That'd get good spark. Yeah, we're sparking. Got the rotor. Uh, I'm going to kind of clean it up some. You can see it's pretty burnt looking, kind of corroded there. We'll at least hit it with some emery cloth. We'll slap the distributor back together and get our fire in order all right. And then we'll just test for spark out at the end of one spark plug. And then maybe we'll send some gas down her damn throat. Everything's there, huh? Yeah. All right, bro, I'll let you get to it, dog. All right, man. You're welcome to chill. No, I just... Bill, Bill's already in the video. I put oh, every... Oh, man. I put everyone to work. I don't give a damn. There you... Yeah. She's going to be famous now. Yep. True, man. Uh, uh, I can't afford hourly, though, but I got water I paid. Oh, pay shit. water. I'm good with that, bro. After 5 o'clock, it switches to Modelo if you want. Oh. I'll be back at 4 uh, 45, bro. I'll be back at about 4 45. Inside the cap is pretty damn clean. I don't really see any corrosion, so I ain't going to worry about it. I'm going to just pop her back on here. Which means I got to deal with these demon clips because these things don't mess around. <laughs> You're sitting there laughing at me like I ain't struggling. <laughs> Hold the camera. <laughs> damn but, guys i'm not joking those clips they uh they're probably made out of the old leaf springs off this thing or something i don't know because damn so obviously our coil wire goes there right here should be number one so let me grab a plug wire there's one <laughs> Next time, I just pull all the damn things off and do it again. <laughs> it's all right. We got through it. Or we're getting through it anyhow. We get the plug wires right, Bill? Hopefully. <laughs> we'll know in a minute. Yeah. Let's see if we got spark down there at number one. Oh, yeah. Right I heard it before I synced it. Here, hold up. Grab a hold of that and I'll test it. Okay, give me a minute. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're ready to send some get her done 91 downer and see if she wants to bust off for us. So we make our coil hot here. What do you think, Bill? She's going to run. Pretty quiet. She sounded pretty good. Oh, All right. Where that fuel pickup hose is on the fuel pump, pulled it off. Uh, I'm gonna put a new hose on it. 
Damn, Bill, quit zooming in. They won't see my damn teeth. Oh, they're nice and white. <laughs> I'm gonna try to prime this baby a little bit. I don't know if she's bone dry or what. I cranked and cranked on that thing and we couldn't get fuel out. So I dropped this. And luckily we got Bill here for a professional opinion and he said, quote unquote, oh yeah, that thing looks like shit. <laughs> I thought I recognized one of those fuel filters uh, from some of the stuff in here. So right off, look at this. Whole new little canister and then Boom! You know what they say. Well, it's not really PG, so I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> but you know what they say. Yeehaw, we scored. You, you know, yeehaw, we scored. There we go, that's a good one, Bill. The good thing is we can upmark these parts and sell them to Rick twice. <laughs> Rick, the fuel's eight bucks a gallon. <laughs> yeah, we only use true fuel around here, so we gotta Eight bucks hell, this stuff's like twenty dollars a gallon. Twenty bucks a can. Alright guys, well I've primed primed it both ways. No matter what I do here, we're not getting any fuel. That sucks, because I like just using the mechanical pumps, but we'll throw the electric on it real quick. Make her coil hot. Fuel pump. So I wonder now if we can go off of that, cause that'd be great. Huh. Maybe we just couldn't get her in enough RPMs with the starter. Fuel pump just ain't getting it done. All right, let me hook up. The electric fuel pump again, unfortunately. She is holding a decent idle, but that carburetor, she needs some love. That sucks it's sitting there leaking. This whole thing's fuel system just ain't doing too good. It took channel locks and about everything I had to get this off. And well, you can just tell there, yeah. Let's just say she's a little chunky. So we're kinda in a bad spot. We're in a bad spot because we need to pull the carburetor apart. It looks like uh, we need to put fuel pump on it. O'Reilly's has both of those, except in an hour, I gotta head over to town anyways to take Miss Ella somewhere. So we ain't gonna do the trip twice. Uh, this thing don't wanna go up into park. So obviously she's in neutral and or the transmission is just totally trashed uh, considering it'll sit here and run and not go anywhere so maybe i can look into that or i guess i can start pulling the carburetor off i just disconnected the linkage off the transmission and we still can't uh, shift it up here so that's kind of good because it means our problems in our shifter and not in the transmission uh, but yeah we gotta see what's got her bound up tighter than a dick's hat band up here damn it for some reason, this light wants to get picked up by the camera and make it look like we're having a disco party in here. I just slobbered on my mustache. Damn it, I don't have my steering wheel puller, by the way. It sounds decent though. Yeah, I know the, the motor sounds healthy. It don't sound, you know, it don't sound like that damn Nissan or Toyota you drove over yesterday, I promise you that. That's <laughs> perfectly yeah. good truck, are they? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a good truck. <laughs> if you're driving that thing, you'll be tickled pink with how this motor sounds. <laughs> Hank's in the shop. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Squeeze that black thing down there. It's spring-loaded. You pick it up off there. Ooh. Thank you. Spark plug. All right, we ain't gonna take her apart any more than that. 
but uh, yeah, at least we got her off. Oh hell, there's some type of mixture screw in there. Can't even see from dirt daubers. Big Jim's here. He's gonna like this one. He's a Ford guy. I got some cats like that down at the farm. Everyone wants to know where you've been. They ain't seen you in a video. Yeah, try to make a living. Gotta I make a living. I ain't rich like pudding. Yeah, he ain't rich like me yet. We get, we get rich enough, we'll make dad work full time too. All right, we got a carburetor kit. Uh, I've never tore into one of these. So I'm basically gonna pull it apart real quick. And if there's anything I need to show you guys when I find, you know, what all seals are bad and stuff, I'll show you. So this is 100% what was leaking. Uh, I don't really see, you know, rips or tears or nothing, but uh, yeah, hopefully we got that in there. I'll be honest, that don't look like the right kit to me. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Okay, that's good. All right, I got this old girl stripped down. She's pretty dirty in there, as you can see. Now, just gonna use some carb cleaner, some picks, you know, whatever. Let's get all the gunk out of her. Got her cleaned up pretty good. I'll say she may have had a little bit of junk in her. What do y'all think? Huh? Oh, hell. Get our new needle. Clip it the same. I'm not a carburetor guy. I don't know if I mentioned that. Got our little retaining clip in. All right, we should be needle and seating. Seating and needling. Shitting and knitting. All right, I'm just rhyming. Uh, what do we want to do next? All right, I think I got it together, right? I hope. Uh, when I was taking this apart, I don't remember pulling a vacuum hose off back here, so we may have had a vacuum leak right there, possibly. Uh, let's go throw this baby on. How about that? And I bet that camera is picking up the LEDs again. And I'm sorry, all right? Taylor got me this fancy ass light and it's awesome. And I thought I'd make it where you guys could really see what's going on. And you guys can see so good that it's giving you like x-ray vision. <laughs> hey, last time this carburetor was built or rebuilt, it was tested by C Cracker. I'm not even making that up. That's what the sticker says. C Cracker. Carburetor was once put on by C Cracker. Or tested by. Now it's gonna be rebuilt and tested by old P Pudding. Told y'all earlier, that's old Pimp Pudding, baby. P Pudding in the house. I guess I should say in the shop. Slap our vacuum back on for the uh, vacuum advance. Slap our heater hose back in this holder on the damn choke. That's about the damnedest thing I ever did, see? Use that heater water to make sure your choke opens, you know. Makes sense, I reckon. I didn't get into the choke any. I ain't too worried about it myself. All right, I think we've got that carburetor rebuilt, hooked back up. Now, yeah, we need to hook up the fuel hose, but other, other than that, and wherever that vacuum port went to the uh, back, that's exactly how it was before we took it off. She's just missing one thing. Now she needs a rebuilt by P pudding tag, so there we go. Now she's legit. Gotta let everybody know, damn it. Well, damn it. That looks good, right? Uh, believe it or not, that was a little kink there. Now maybe you can tell, but that uh, fuel line's been on and off that old fuel pump a couple times. Yeah, so we just lost our hard line that 
wiggles up through there, which that's fine. We'll replace it with rubber hose for now. Ah, that sucks. Now we need to figure out if we gotta straighten this up enough to be able to get a rubber hose on or see if I've got enough stuff. Looks like that's eighth inch MT NPT thread. See if I got a barb for that, perhaps. Perhaps. Been working all damn day, and I just feel like we ain't got very much done. But that's part of life. Huh. Well, what do we have there? You don't just keep a couple of them sitting around? Hell. This may only be for quarter inch, but I guarantee you this has less restriction than what that kinked hard line had. That'll go in there. So as long as we can route a hose coming up in a certain way, we should be good. Well, I'll tell you what, this is brass and blue monster here. This ain't no bottom shelf stuff here, Uncle Rick. This is good quality stuff you're getting. I just got to upmarket 30%. Hell, I didn't even put that back on the carburetor. Down here, though, you can see we got a bolt on that side and a bolt on that side. So, uh, as easy as it is to record underneath here, I'm going to pull this old fuel pump off real quick, y'all. Not terrible to pull. You know, I'm, I'm slowly uh, starting to like these Fords more and more, if I'm being honest. Uh, another, another thing I realized, uh, I know I just said I was going to upmark that brass piece 30% to Rick, but it's a quarter inch. Uh, output we had to take the input out of this one the input on that new one is uh, pressed into it so we can use the input from this one for the output for that one did I just confuse y'all this was here on the old one uh, that one's pressed in so we can take this and swap it there I've never put one of these on I've never even worked on one of these engines before so yeah I'll fill up in there and see where this is supposed to go you know, I don't know what kind of trickery and uh, deceit this engine is going to try to play on me. All right. We're going to get you pumping though, baby. You ain't got a choice. That loud son of a bitch out of here. We're trying to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> Give it the pry bar. Hell. You need a real pry bar. Yeah, not that little baby I handed you or what. I got our 5 sixteenths. Uh, output from the fuel pump hooked up down there and I believe Rick's you know he's searching the toolbox he ain't ever been in so maybe he'll find what he's looking for he's got a steering puller on she gonna come where's the hammer right there <laughs> it's called half inch impact <laughs> Put the Ugga Duggas on her. <laughs> I'm just about to become the personality and the cameraman. Ha have someone else come over and do the damn work. <laughs> Not the bad day to be in the fuel hose business instead of the old steering wheel pulling business. I'm bringing over a better cooler. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't squeeze that twice. Keep her out of the fan. We ain't gonna worry about those 37,000 exhaust leaks. Uh, so, what I just tried to do was look and see what the temp was at or oil pressure, and uh, we have no readings. Well, we have no readings because I can't fit these 47,000 eyelets on this new solenoid and, you know, all the extra accessories. So we may be able to touch one at a time until we figure out which one we need. Uh, this one has auxiliary fuse holder. That one's kind of cramped. That one has auxiliary fuse holder. 
Uh, so maybe these three over here look like they're actually coming out of factory wiring. Solenoid wire, ignition wire to go hot to the coil. So over here, we'll take our alligator clip off for our coil, hook it back up. <laughs> oh, so this thing got neutral safety? Yeah. Uncle Rick turned the key on. Uh, that way when you see if the coil's hot, I just ho hooked up our uh, test switch again. We got it idling again. The only way we could really get it to run right though is to hook up the alligator clip going back to the coil which probably means we have a voltage drop going on somewhere with something with a factory wiring, obviously, because once we change that wire back, well, she's sitting here holding idle again, so. Just killed this puppy. Here's the deal. We're burning off a lot of trans fluid and rat poop and dirt and the grease and grime that have built up on these heads. And from me hitting it with the super kill earlier today, uh, that's where a large part of our smoke's coming from. Now, other than that, she was a little rich. We just tuned on it. So you got your two uh, screws underneath here. We turned the one in. When you start to hear it bog, we came out till she hit, you know, a little smoother. Go to the next side, do the same thing. We had it idled up pretty damn high, okay? So we idled her down till she was running kind of rough, almost like she wanted to die. That way it wasn't, uh, you know, you're not pulling all that stuff from having it idled up. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Pulling all your air and uh, fuel or whatever. So with her idled down, even though it was running rough, we did the same process and went back and forth a couple times until she smoothed out. And once it did, uh, I was even able to turn down the idle screw that was holding it another half turn. She's smooth now. Uh, that's where we're gonna let her sit for tonight. She's getting pretty toasty warm. Uh, yeah, I can still hold my hand on it, but still. Uh, we're gonna take that as a victory for today. Now we're trying to get that steering wheel off because we can't get her to go through the gears. Uh, so let me show you what I got going on this morning. Rick was having trouble because this thing was trying to walk last night. So I drilled a little pilot uh, dimple in the middle and I sharpened the old puller to a point where it couldn't walk out of there. Try to give her some ugga duggas and tap on the center and it full stripped out the threads off of this and out of the steering wheel. Next, tried to rig up pieces of strap to go around here to hold it. No matter what I did, this baby would not pull off. She's in bad shape, let's just say that. Decided to take a piece of wire and wrap it around our shifter. That way she was forced back. I found a hole right up in there where I put the nozzle from the WD-40 and I gave her a pretty good squirting inside there. And the same down there, it was really hard to see, but I soaked anything I could with WD-40. Where that shifter lever comes out right there that just goes up and down. Well, I put that on it and then I smacked that with that hammer you see right there. And I smacked on it till that lever went all the way to the bottom. And it took some blows, okay? I had to smack her pretty hard. She's pretty solid in there. So once I got her down there, I crawled my happy little butt right underneath this truck with the same tools, and I smacked her back up this way. And I did that about, I don't know, 429 times until it finally got just a little bit looser. She still ain't perfect, but after working this baby about 10,000 times back and forth, we can take her through some gears. That means I need to try to slap this together and then we need to hook up our linkage down on the transmission that I disconnected yesterday. Why don't we see if we can get her to start off the key again. So put our wire back on our coil here. Throw our wire back on our starter solenoid. Throw our ground on. Blow some bubbles. Come on, baby. Oh, hell. Right there hanging. <laughs> Think that'll make a difference? That's where the hole is. That's what the hole's for, where we are giving her some WD-40. So to mount this, yeah, the stuff on the column's kind of busted. So I'm gonna see if I can find the sweet spot and maybe we'll just tape her into place.
kind of right in there got that taped in a position where it holds it where it's making those red wires are your neutral safety come on baby let's look at some factory wiring i reckon so this is kind of how this baby was acting last night right when we hooked up all the factory stuff she wouldn't run uh hook up all of our hot wires and she'd run just fine so let's look at some factory wiring i reckon reckon that needs plugged in maybe that'll fix our problem Special's rocking, don't come a knocking. <laughs> All right, maybe we ought to let her warm up before we give her a little power rev. All right, so I tried a couple times, guys, and this thing don't want to stay running with that factory wire hooked up to the coil. I'm not sure what's going on. If I'm being honest, I'm not too worried about it. I'm halfway through Saturday, and I still got to edit this video and get it uploaded and posted to y'all by monday which means i'm running out of time so if we want to you know make this thing run we know we got to hook up one jumper wire to the coil we're going to take that as a win we're going to let rick uh you know do some troubleshooting and see what's going on with the factory stuff because we simply ain't got time to keep messing with it uh you can tell one of our trans cooler lines is leaking let's see if we can't get that to seal off probably won't be too hard uh just a little bit of torque will probably go a long way good as new they've got a extra cooler hung with some twine here as you can see maybe see that old twine right there got an extra cooler spliced in don't mind that moss that's just hanging either well let's see what the chances are we can get a brake pedal out of this thing Rick popped this cover yesterday. I haven't even seen in there. She dry. Reckon she's thirsty. I guarantee you I ain't got enough fluid. Probably gonna have to run and grab some. I'm gonna go around and open up each bleeder right now. WD-40, if you wanna work with me, and I know you'll never see this, I will give you some honest feedback because your lids freaking suck. Maybe we can work together and get one that ain't a total piece of crap. Just kind of flopped you guys on the chair there. I'm just making sure this thing ain't clogged. Gotta love weed eaters driving by messing up your freaking videos. Uh, I'm gonna throw this back in, not tighten it up. I'll go loosen the front too, and we'll let it start to bleed itself. I know it ain't gonna move an awful amount of fluid, but we gotta go get uh, more brake fluid anyhow. So might as well, right? Front driver side bleeder, she plugged up. All right, you wanna get feisty? We'll get feisty. There we go. Had to hit her with the old Allen wrench, let her know who's boss. Much better. That's the first time I've checked the bleeders on one of these old rigs and well, I'm glad we did. Top this baby off and Though it dropped a little bit, uh, pumping on it, I'm not really sending fluid out. Now, I did close three of the bleeders, and I had the pickle jar hooked up to the one, and I couldn't really get fluid to drop. I cracked these lines loose, and maybe you can see all the bubbles pushing out of there. So, I think, pretty sure we're airlocked. Don't, uh, don't crack these loose without line wrenches, especially old ones. Push the pedal, got her propped where it won't suck air back up in. I can see the front one just dropping. Now I usually work from the furthest one away towards the front on a system like this where we don't know if it's bone dry. Sometimes what I'll do to help get it flowing through is start at the front 
work my way back to get fluid back there and then come my way back to the front to get all the air out i call it the pickle jar even though it says prego or whatever i don't even know where the hell this jar came from with that down in the fluid when we pump air out the fluid will but or the air will bubble up through the fluid and it can suck up fluid but it obviously ain't gonna suck up air and yeah we're just gonna work our way around and as much fun as it'd be to just sit here and pump on camera uh i'm gonna get this done and then i'll check in with you guys all right we've got a pedal now uh not getting as much fluid out the front ones as i'd like um i don't know if something's maybe clogged up if we've got some issues with our master cylinder the rear ones i got plenty of fluid out of the front ones uh, i've sat there and pumped on it till i did drop it down some i know they are working uh there's some chocolate milk left over from bleeding uh hell i guess i need to move this you can out of my way because if she'll hold an idle and pull down in the gear well i reckon that's a good way to test brakes right <laughs> make sure it's headed towards the highway before anyone thinks I'm really putting other people at danger, because I can hear that already, if for some reason the truck wouldn't stop, I can hook a U-turn in front of my house, and then I got two acres to get quit, uh, stopped to get quit. <laughs> well, I guess before I ran and got brake fluid, we could have checked trans fluid. And shocker, what is bone dry? Uh, who's really surprised after seeing how much that dripped? You know, there ain't no telling how uh, it don't matter you know what matters what matters is we need freaking trans fluid power steering is low too and by low i mean absolutely bone dry at least on the transmission one on the back side there's a little splish splash of trans fluid here's the deal in about an hour i need to be ready to go to a birthday party I don't know if Rick wants me to go buy a bunch of trans fluid if he has trans fluid. Kind of his call on that because I don't want to spend a lot of money he don't want to spend. Uh, and I need to mow because once again it's going to be raining. The other day I tried to mow and you can tell it looks like hell and I didn't even get the back half done. So I'm going to at least try to stay on top of the front half where we ain't walking through a damn safari. Well if I can't see a bit on the dipstick, how much does that mean we need? I don't know but we're about to find out give her some of that thick old type f most people don't know it but type f actually stood for uh, flirtatious because you were flirting with walking if you're brave enough to drive a ford <laughs> i'm just playing ford people calm down it actually stood for uh faithful it stood for faithful our little rod's disconnected on our choke. Let me hook that up, see if we can get this choke to actually work. That way you ain't gotta do the start, rev her to the moon, run around and grab her to get her warm. Hey, that damn door wasn't closed. Reckon we ought to try to clean her up or what? Pretty happy with that. It actually feels pretty good. I'm just saying that calls for another Tiger for Major Pain victory dance. It's time to get down. Do that. Do that. Got y'all way up there. Let's clean out the back of this old thing. We just found the worst part of the truck with all this crap back here. Shocker. I've got a neighbor next to me who burns wood on the regular and well, not too long ago I bet I paid for his next couple burn permits. That way I always have a place to put branches. So always a good idea to be neighborly. There's where we can put the wood. 
Got it. <laughs> I thought about power braking in here and letting it roll over the front, but then I thought about having to put a windshield in here and well, YouTube don't play that good. Not yet anyhow. You really can't even tell that I've got it parked underneath this tree with that camouflage on it. That'll hold it. And if it don't, it should have. Got a set of draws up in here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll let Rick go through all this. And we got the trash. I'm just gonna throw this crap in the back of the old pickup and just run it to Rick's real quick because I ain't got a room to get rid of all of his trash. I think I got too much in the back. My suspension's broken. Hey, you come over to the house. I got a Datsun. I'll show you what a real wagon looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can stick that wagon inside my wagon. <laughs> now, as much as I want to make you guys a super detailed detailing video cleaning this thing up, well, I don't. I don't want to make that video. And I've got enough crap sitting here, so we need to get this back to Rick. I'm going to put y'all up from a nice aerial viewpoint and... I'm going to pressure wash the hell out of this thing. I just slobbered again on myself. Hell. So it looked like a few minutes of work just took about 40 minutes of pressure washing and she still ain't perfect but honestly that looks pretty damn good the bed's lucky it got as clean as it got because that was hell you want to make sure to keep a nice looking driveway damn i totally forgot to do underneath the hood damn it voila you know it's vo voila except when you're redneck it's voila uh look some duct tape over that some duct tape over our fuel tank and uh, she's pressure washed. I'm running behind. We need to get this thing finished cleaned up where we can get it to Rick, where me and Hot Rod can play. I'm gonna employ the two older girls to clean the inside because I don't want to do it. And maybe me and Elray can go ride bikes real quick. Looking good, looking good. Bye. Just a quick detailed job. Uh, the girls definitely earned their money. It does not look too shabby in here. I didn't make them go over the top, of course. But they did a pretty darn good job for a quick, you know, 30 minute jobber. So after pressure washing this thing, uh, there's definitely yellow underneath this copper. And uh, this copper is over wood grain. So I think originally the trim for sure would have had wood grain in there. Uh, what color would the roof have been? Just yellow with the trim separating it? Or, you know, if anyone knows, be sure to drop a comment down below. Definitely the worst part of the truck where all that crap was sitting in there. Uh, that kind of sucks, but, you know, luckily it didn't take out the whole bed floor, just kind of this middle piece. So that'd be easy to fix at least. And I didn't put it back in, but I did uh, clean up the floor mat that has the dual lions on it. Unless you want to call it gargoyles like me. Is it gargoyles or lions? Gargoyle sounds more ferocious. Most folks don't know it, but the type F for the trans fluid stands for ferocious. All right, so God willing, she stays running. Uh, Rick's coming to get his truck. It may have just been a couple days with her, but I'm gonna miss the old girl. She's pretty sweet. Might have to swing her wide like a Cadillac. So I did feel something move in the master cylinder earlier. I think probably, uh, maybe, I don't know. The front brakes are definitely working better. Uh, probably still got a little air in them, maybe. Uh, they, they feel all right for, you know, old brakes. Speedo's trying to work, though. There ain't no way we're going 25, I don't think. Rick said he's going to tune on her a little more and get her, you know, more ready to be an actual driver instead of just, you know, going through the basics. He's going to fine-tune it, I guess you could say. And then he don't know what he's going to do with it. He may flip it. He may keep it, you know. Hell, she ain't a bad truck. She <laughs> she cleaned up way too good to just be sitting underneath a tree somewhere, you know. No 
of obnoxious shakes or rattles or anything like that so far. Holding a decent idle. Only problem left with this carburetor still is in the choke. That's why the last couple times I've started it, it's had a hard time starting. And it's because that choke's never in the correct position uh, for where the engine wants it to run right. Don't mind them flip-flops and painted toenails. Just driving an old camper special here. This used to be an old ramping bridge in high school. Give her some gas and try to keep it out of the ditch. Woo! Gotta do some driving, folks. <laughs> Hope Rick don't mind me making the 390 work. Not a bad pickup. Made it here to Rick's. And we're done with this thing. Pretty good truck, everyone. And not a lot of rust. Got a you know, couple cool things like the bumper. Uh, I like the, the color of it. Got most of the trim. Uh, I think the, the motor's a damn good motor. So, you know what? I think he gets that choke lined out. And, you know, maybe the brake's a little tighter. Get a little bit of air out of them. And I think we got a good one here. So, uh... Big thanks to Rick for letting me do this because it gets me a video for you guys. And big thanks to you guys for always watching. Uh, if you're on the old Instagrammer, I'm on there at Puddin's Fab Shop. If y'all want to give me a follow. And I will see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Now it's time for us to find a new project. kind of like this not having to buy the projects. I can just have Rick keep buying them and we'll keep doing them. And that, everybody, is how you have three quarter tons of fun. Now I got a shop to clean, damn it.